Last week, I showed you the best Modern Warfare in-game settings, and today I'll show you the best config settings for an additional slight boost in FPS and some further improvements to visibility. Most importantly, I'm also going to show you which settings you should absolutely not change in order to avoid making MW3 look like you're playing Minecraft. Not kidding, some suggestions that fellow YouTubers make are absolutely wild and as always I seem to be the only one to bother actually testing the performance and providing visual comparisons of the settings. So to modify the MW3 config file you want to make sure first of all that the game is not running, then open the explorer, go to your documents, open the Call of Duty folder, players and open the options for .cod23 config file. Now I'm not gonna lie to you and pretend like there is a huge potential to boost FPS in Modern Warfare 3 if you just change these config settings, because that's honestly just complete nonsense. Still there is one setting in this config file that is quite important and that can quite significantly affect your performance in Modern Warfare 3 and that is the render worker count. So this setting is supposed to reflect the number of physical cores of your CPU and for some reason the game is simply not able to properly detect this number for basically any system that I tested Modern Warfare 3 on. Now briefly on screen I'm showing you the average and 1% lows of the in-game benchmark with a wide range of different render worker counts for my primary and secondary system in blue and yellow respectively. Clearly, on my primary system, changing this value to something else than the recommended 8 does not really affect performance in Modern Warfare 3 too significantly, um, except for maybe halving the value to 4, I'm seeing a roughly 5% drop in the 1% lows. On the other hand, on my secondary system, which has an i7-7700K that is a CPU with 4 cores, we can see that if I set the value of render worker count to anything but 4, I'm losing significant performance in MW3. So somewhat unsurprisingly, this setting has a much higher impact on a more CPU bound system and there it is absolutely crucial to set this value to the proper core count of your CPU. Now a lot of people think that you can simply go into the task manager and look at the number of cores here uh, to figure out the correct number, which is unfortunately completely wrong, especially if you're on a 12th or 13th gen Intel CPU in which case this actually reflects both the performance and efficiency cores, which essentially is not what you want to have your values sent to. However, one important piece of information you get from this pane is the CPU that you have. So in order to figure out what the correct render worker count number is, memorize your CPU, so in my case i9-13900K, open Google and search for the CPU that you own. If you are on Intel, then open the Intel Arc website, so this is the first result here, and look for the number of performance cores, which is the number you want to put into the config file. On the other hand, if you have an older CPU that does not have performance and efficiency cores, such as for instance an 11th or 10th gen CPU, um, then the value that you want to look for is the total number of cores, in this case it would be 10. Finally, for all of you that own an AMD CPU, the procedure is quite similar. Also simply search for your CPU, open the first result which should be from AMD, go to specifications and look for the number of CPU cores. For your convenience, I summarized the proper render worker count value for the most popular CPUs that I could find in this table here so that you can hopefully just pick out the right value for your system. The next option that significantly affects performance in Modern Warfare 3 is the Sun Shadow Cascade. By default this is set to high, but by reducing this to low, I'm actually seeing a roughly 2% boost in performance on both my systems. However, it's quite important to know that when we reduce this option, we are also significantly deteriorating the visual quality of shadows in-game. Here you can see a comparison of the shadows when the in-game shadow setting is set to medium with a varying sun shadow cascade setting from low to high. Clearly, if you want to make your game look as best as possible, then you definitely do not want to reduce this setting in the config. On the other hand, if you're looking for the absolute best possible FPS, then I would highly recommend to set this setting to low. You can do this by copying the text on the right hand side and pasting it into the quotation marks. 
By the way, if you enjoy the huge effort that I put into these types of videos by actually testing each setting and providing reasons for why you should enable or disable them, then do me a favor and like this video and hit that subscribe button. It really makes a huge difference for me and it also helps to actually push this video in the algorithm so that more people can see this video and properly set up their config. Moving on to a setting that greatly improves visibility in game and that is to almost completely remove blood effects from the game. To do this, you want to look for show blood, set it to false and set the blood limit setting to true. Note that from my testing, there is absolutely no difference visually or performance wise when changing the blood limit interval. In fact, there is no measurable impact in terms of performance when disabling this setting. However, from this comparison, you can see that this blood cloud that is emitted whenever shooting enemy players is basically removed whenever we set show blood to false and blood limit to true. And in my opinion, this is just a great setting in order to kind of tidy up your game and make it just a little bit easier to see what you're shooting at, especially if you might be actually shooting a body and it just like emits a big red smoke puff um, and an enemy player is actually behind that body, then with this setting changed, you can actually see the live player much better that you actually want to shoot at. The next setting I'd like to talk about is the anisotropic filtering quality. From the in-game menu, the lowest value that we can set this to is anisotropic two times. However, in the configuration, there are two more options that actually further reduce the anisotropic filtering quality. However, from my performance benchmark, I did not see any performance impact whatsoever. In fact, if you do decide to set this to texture filter nearest, your game becomes a hot mess with huge pixelated blobs all over the place, especially when you're inside of smokes, when something explodes, but also generally surfaces literally look like you're playing Minecraft. So no matter what you do in order to gain FPS in MW3, do not set the texture filter to the nearest option. Corpses Calling Threshold also has absolutely no impact according to the benchmark. However, you should note that in a proper game with live players, this actually might give you a slight boost in performance because this might affect the number or distance at which corpses are still rendered in game. So reducing this might improve your performance ever so slightly. However, to be honest, I cannot tell you the actual performance gains that this might or might not have. Finally, Reflection Probe Relight has a ever so slight negative effect on performance when set to a high value. However, visually I wasn't able to see any improvements or deteriorations when modifying this value. Therefore, my recommendation would be to set this to 1. The next option that I'm seeing people advise to actually turn on is to enable resizable bar support for Modern Warfare 3. From my testing, however, I did not see any performance benefit whatsoever whenever I enabled resizable bar. Just a few lines above, we actually also have another option that is also being talked about to improve performance in MW3 and that is the virtual texturing memory mode. In fact, it's actually quite funny how people recommend to set this to a lower value, whereas in reality, setting this to extra large provides an ever so slight improvement in performance. Visually, there is obviously absolutely no difference whether you set this to extra small or extra large. It's just about how the different textures are actually tiled in memory rather than what their quality is going to be like. The final option that has an ever so slight impact on performance is the Catmull Clark subdivision level. And essentially, the higher the value here, the ever so slightly lower performance in Modern Warfare 3. However, the difference really is almost negligible and visually I wasn't able to tell any difference between setting this setting to 0 and 8 from the in-game benchmark. So I guess if you want to get the absolute highest possible performance, then set this to 0, but frankly, I personally wouldn't bother about this too much. And that's all the settings I tested for today's video. I hope you really learned something new and I really hope that you are now getting the highest possible performance on your system at the best possible visibility. If you haven't already, then absolutely make sure to also watch my best in-game settings video, where I'm also showing you the performance and visual impact of every in-game setting in Modern Warfare 3. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.